Hey guys, Natalia Schneimler here. I help boy moms have a better relationship with their sons and themselves by teaching them the tools how to manage their mind so that when anything comes up in life, they know exactly how to take care of themselves and their kids. Hey guys, how are you doing? How's it going? I have something helpful for you today that will help you either stop fighting or stop nagging someone, or on the other hand, it will help you understand someone who is nagging you or is fighting with you about something, and it will just help you understand where they're coming from and also help you understand how to deal with it. So, of course, I have my personal example to make it super useful and memorable for you. And again, I want to share my own examples of how I don't do it well, and then I use that to figure out how to do it better so that we don't have a false idea that other people don't have these problems. So, here's what my example... And Okay, so here's what it is. Basically, if you're fighting with someone or nagging them, you are not trusting them and you're coming from fear. You're afraid they're not going to make the right decision or you're afraid of the worst out- outcome or you're afraid that it's, they're going to have a bad habit or whatever. Let's say with your son, right? You're afraid they're not going to make the right decision. So you feel the need to intervene. You, you need to tell them, to remind them, to teach them, blah, blah, blah. And so that can cause a fight because you're coming out of fear and so you're going to overdo it. You're not going to trust them. You're going to annoy the hell out of them. So they're not going to like that. And so first step is to realize that you're coming out of fear and what you're afraid of. So you can ask yourself, what am I afraid of? So let me tell you my own example and how I kind of went through that journey. So... um I was, my son, one of my sons went away for a week and I found myself not trusting him with his device, devices, one device. And, but he was going away to another province far away. And the the most I could do was to put parental controls and control the apps and the time limit and everything like that. But because I was coming out of fear that he's just going to be on his iPad all night long and not sleep and whatever. I was feeling really terrible because I was assuming the worst. So because it didn't feel good, I went looking for a better answer. I I thought this can't be the right way to do this because it feels terrible. And I got coached on it. And from that coaching, I realized that the two basically options are fear or trust and and then the question was okay where do I already trust him and at first it was really hard to find the answer which could be the case for you as it could be for us moms with kids that we were just so used to doing things for them and deciding things for them that we're not used to trusting them with some things if you're like me So I first said, oh my gosh, I have no idea. I don't know if I trust them with anything. But then I remembered an example where um, usually the beginning of a school year, other parents come to me and they say, oh, you know, who did your son get as a teacher? And are they a good teacher? Or do you know anything about them? Or do you know anything about who's the best teacher in this grade? And every time they bring that up to me, I think, who cares? <laughs> I I just really don't care because I trust that they always get the best teacher that they need. And I have a caveat, caveat here is that if they don't have the best teacher, it's because they need this teacher to teach them something. Like if it's a difficult teacher, they also need to learn that skill of how to be with a difficult teacher, which they have had. Um, so, but my initial assumption which I truly believe is that oh they always get the best teacher like the school has all the best teachers so I trust that this is true which is totally optional not true at all totally subjective but it is my choice to believe that and so this is basically trust in the universe trust in the school the teachers trust in whatever is happening outside of me is great And therefore, I think it's super boring to talk about because what's there to talk about? It's 
it's good. Everything's good. Can we just move on to something else? Um, and so I realized, okay, this is where I have trust. And then the other parents who don't, then they're worried, right? Oh, what if they get a bad teacher? What about like, I don't know if I, if this teacher is good, I need to find out, I need to talk to them. And so they spend time not trusting whoever that teacher is and being a little bit afraid or worried that it's not a great teacher. And so I feel for them because I have that scenario in other cases, right? Where I don't trust my son with the device. So once I've identified the problem is that, okay, I am coming out of fear. I'm afraid about something. And so I keep nagging or fighting with this person. Then this is what I have identified is that the where we want to be is in trust because that's where everything is awesome. So the question is, how do I go from fear to trust? And the answer is not really wanting to go there that badly. The answer is to be in the question, to ask yourself that, okay, how could I trust him with this? And leave it at that. That's it. Just leave it there. Pose the question to your brain. And when the situation comes up, you can just observe that you are afraid. That's how I did it. I'm just observing. Okay, I am afraid. Okay, I'm worried, but hmm, I'm kind of aware of that. I see that it's happening. And I also know that I could also trust him somehow. And because I know some parents trust their kids with devices. Hmm, interesting. So two options are possible. So then basically the path from fear to trust is to simply observe yourself doing both. And that's it. No rush, no uh, agenda, just observe. And as you observe, as, as you ask yourself the question, okay, how do I get to trust? You will subconsciously, naturally get there on at your own pace because simply because you have an intention to get there because you want to. You, If you're forcing it, then it's not going to be effective, I don't think, because it's you can't really force yourself to stop being afraid the way you do that is by naturally allowing yourself to question where you are like oh why am i afraid afraid how come other parents aren't afraid hmm and so you kind of just start to wiggle that fear wiggle that belief and doubt and just question it and then it might take a day or two it might take weeks it might take years for you to really not be afraid but whatever that path is that is your path and if you are um, really pushing for it it will take you a lot longer because you are judging yourself if you're judging your own fear you're not going to be able to let go of it and that's why if you don't have any agenda if you're simply observing your fear then it's going to be super quick so that's how I have moved from fear to trust simply by observing it and now that my son is back and I have some triggers like I have with food I don't trust them to make good decisions with food uh, and devices Uh, just the top the top two right now right and so I as I observe myself go through these things with them I also am wondering okay well I know what trust feels like and I've also kind of let go a bit and I as I realized it feels really as one option. I only have really one good option. The other option of fear is super controlling and really I can't really control it. So really one good option that's actually effective that actually serves me and my son is the trust. So because I'm realizing that that's the only option then it becomes a lot easier to be in that middle area between fear and trust and let go a bit and just say whatever will happen will happen and I have to be willing for them to make their own mistakes. Now that's the other part, right? We're not aiming here for perfection. We're aiming for them to learn and make their own decisions for themselves, which will involve a lot of mistakes. So that is the gray area that we're practicing in but we're practicing trust that they will figure it out.
And that's the thing. Find a, an area where you already trust your son completely with everything and then copy paste that feeling. Where else do I trust him? Like I trust my son to um, tell me which sport he likes and I don't have to worry about, you know, forcing him to do sports, for example. That's just done, right? So I leave him be. And so where else can I apply the same trust with him? Why don't I trust him? So the same thing applies with your spouse, with your friend, with yourself. Sometimes when I don't trust myself, I over control myself. I try to overdo it, which always bounces back. Like with food, if I restrict myself too much because I'm not trusting myself to make the right decision, then it bounces back. Then I overeat the next time. So again, the practice here is trusting yourself to make the right decision. And so really the paradigm is two things, simple, very simple, fear and trust. So you're always through your day, you're either bouncing back between one or the other with yourself or other people. And another way of saying trust could be love um, because you're feeling really good about this topic about that person but whatever that word is you will feel really good either it's trust or love and you will know whether you're in feeling bad then you're somewhere around fear afraid doubt scared or if you're feeling good then you're more in a trusting loving space so that's what I have for you and when the someone else is coming at you with concerns, doubts, nagging, fighting, they are afraid of something. What are they afraid of? You can ask yourself, like, why are they coming at me? Like, if your husband is, in, is um, questioning you where you've been, well, what can he be afraid of? Maybe he's afraid that you are Spending time with someone he someone he would doesn't want you to spend time with. Maybe he's afraid that you no longer are attracted to him or love him. Just question that and you will have such a deeper understanding of the other person. And then you will be able to comfort his fears straight head on. Instead of getting engaged in this fight about surface level stuff where, oh, you know, I was with this person and da, 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 da. No, you can simply say, oh my gosh, I love you. I want to be with you. You have nothing to worry about, right? Um, so similar things with friends, right? If they're possessive, if they're insecure, you can ask yourself, what are they afraid of? Well, maybe they're afraid that you don't want to be friends with them anymore. Or they're afraid that you're going to find a better friend, right? So all these things, you can see through them by asking yourself a question, what are they afraid of or what am I afraid of? That's it. Super simple. So I had to share it with you because it has helped me get perspective on my own insecurities with my kids and get distance from them and then calm down. So apply this to yourself. And I hope this is helpful. Please let me know if it's helpful. I would love to hear your stories. And of course, if you need any help with your relationships, that's what I'm here for. Come to my website, sign up for a free session, and I will see you on video. Have a great week, guys. Love you. Bye.